Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. Today, live from behind the blue curtain that is New Mexico, I wanted to make a correction from yesterday's uh, podcast. I, part of what I said was uh, about a G3 rifle, not a G43. I have G43s on the mind because it's the number one rifle on my list of top ten I'll go through that list sometime for the podcast. But with all the bad stuff that's going on in the news, and seeing all the bad stuff that's happened with, like, the NFL even, like last night, I pray for that gentleman. I don't know if it was vaccine-related. I don't think it was. I've heard of athletes having similar problems to this before. So I'm not going to go out on a limb and say that's what it was, but I pray for him and his team and his, and all the people in NFL, his family. Um, but to get back to cool shit. So for Christmas, I got something that I didn't expect. I have a friend who's more like a brother. I've known him since I was a very, very small kid. He bought me some Christmas presents that I wasn't expecting, some accessories for my MP5. Um, I got a D50 from Magpul, and my first thoughts on that were, holy crap, this thing's really cool. There's no mods needed um, for it being a Palmer magazine is the best way to put it. The body of it is, anyway. Um, It fits in the Magwell very easily, very well, locks in firmly. Um, and also has a very low profile. It, I've never, I've always wanted a drum for one of my guns, but I've never pulled the trigger on it, mostly because of the weight um, and the cost. The doesn't, the juice doesn't mean uh, meet the squeeze. So, what I mean by that is, what you get for what you pay for is something that makes a rifle really heavy, or a, a gun really heavy. I will say this with a D50, though, that's not the case. It actually lowers the profile even down from what a 30-round magazine would be. Um, I think that's a neat thing, and I've never had a problem with anybody owning a drum. In fact, I think it's a great idea, especially if you're, you know, can hump it around. It's always, for me, what happens when you empty the damn thing. Um, I also got two metal mags. Uh, one from MKE and one from KCI. Um, both fit amazingly. Both look exactly like the one I already came, my mag, uh, my MP5 came with. A little bit different on the finish for the MKE one. Uh, that I suspect has to do with it being military contract magazine or something like that. I think that's hilarious uh, because MKE technically made my MP5. Um, but. I always wanted to say, we got just random stuff. Like, I got coffee from a friend at work before I quit. Uh, The kid's mom got me the chance to shoot the MP5, which was a huge decision maker at Battlefield Las Vegas for me, because that's what led me down the path of buying my uh, MP5. For my birthday, that was a birthday slash Christmas present, I think. Um, for my birthday, I got taken out to dinner by my one of my best friends since the seventh grade. I got a meal uh, from all my people. When I left, I got another gift card. My son yesterday bought me this really big-ass cookie from Crumble, which is a little place in New Mexico, or in our town new anyway it's probably bigger and or more well known in other cities but their cookies are pretty amazing giant if not a little bit uh pricey so i was thinking about stuff that you never buy for your gun though you know those those little things you always push off you know I've always liked flashlights, but I never buy super high-end premium flashlights. Um, I carry one now that I think is fairly 
high end it is extremely bright that one of my friends bought me. Uh, the mic I use for most podcasts came from that same friend, so I'm one of those people that when someone gives me a gift, it matters and it sticks with me. That's why the 2A means so much, is because a lot of the weapons in my collection were gifts from either my father, my brothers, or some other family member, in addition to the ones I bought myself. So, I mean, with all the bad that's been going on in the world, we need those little reminders of what's cool in the 2A. You know, sometimes you need just some that cool gun. You know, I give one of my friends, uh, the one that bought the magazine and the D50, or the, D, the two magazines of the D50, I give him hell all the time because he wants a lever action, uh, a modern lever action with, to where you can mount optics, um, mount a light or a laser, and the only reason why is this is where the boomer FUD in me comes out from being raised by my dad. And the, I will tell you that I have a strong revulsion to that type of gun, even though other people think they're cool. And the reason why is they, they should look a certain way in my mind. But would I want to ban it or say absolutely not, it can't exist? No. Because that's what's cool about the 2A, is your likes, your tastes can go out in this. You know, I've been catching hell forever while I trained and whatnot for using an AK in some of the training classes. And then they realized I could keep up with them. And the only reason why I could keep up with them is because I watched and started looking at other things. I became an informed person, you know. I think that translates to what I've noticed with the MP5 and the G3 rifles, is that the the snap click of an empty magazine is kind of normal for an AK guy or a lady, but what you end up doing is figuring out how many rounds are in the gun just by feel. So as you train with the gun, you end up becoming more effective. Plus, you also have some witness holes in the magazines for either the AK or the MP5, so you can look and see if there's primers on them. I just think that more and more, we need those little reminders. I got to see, you know, the fact that I bought one number two on my dream gun list just for before I uh, ended up leaving the district. That is kind of cool. That's why I hope my business really takes off um, so that I can cover costs for everything else that I've incurred during this last year. <laughs> um, but it's, how many times do you have, like, I have another, the same friend that bought me the flashlight and the mic. He's talking about getting a sub 2000 and a lot of people would say, why? Well, because it's cool. If you want a backpacking gun that takes Glock or Beretta or SIG magazines, why wouldn't you want something like that? Because they, I've fired them, I've touched them, I've held them. They're very simple, they're very reliable, and surprisingly accurate for what they are. So there's something to be said about having a gun just because it's cool, or just getting something because it's cool. You know? You can give a lot of people hell for getting a bayonet for their AR or their AK, because when are they ever going to use a bayonet? But it's cool as hell to have one, just because it's different. You know, a lot of these guys in the media would look at that and go, well, why would they want something like that that makes it a weapon of war? No, it's them thinking about all the accessories that come with it. It's them looking at the possibility if they had to use it. Let's have all the tools that came with it so that I can use it in its intended purpose. I don't understand that. I've never understood why people bash, you know, the, the, the 1911 guys versus the Glock guys. I'm both. And I will tell you, there's a place, time and a place for a 1911, there's a time and a place for a Glock. 
And I'll tell you that I feel more comfortable carrying a Glock because I've had less reliability issues because most of my 1911s, I have two now, seem to be ammo finicky. They get a preference for like three different types of ammo where my Glocks aren't. So I compare them to, you know, I got a Ferrari and then I've got a Yukon. If I'm going to go to the store and get things done, you're going to take the Yukon. You're not going to take a Ferrari. Same thing goes for the gun world. So this marks the second day of a live podcast. Like, share, subscribe, be great.